So now we're going on to the next topic. And that is rigid body statics. Um, so with particles, um, we assumed um, that, you know, we treated the bodies like they had no length dimensions. And uh, we got rid of any orientation information. Now we're going to include both of those. So with rigid bodies, uh, we'll have both of those. Um, and because um, because now forces can happen at different points, Uh, you know, can occur, can be applied at different points. We have to introduce the idea of a moment. Uh, people just call it a moment. Um, but what it really is is a moment of a force about a point. A moment, by the way, is just a, uh, a mathematical term. Um, that's why you see that come up in a lot of things. Uh, area moment of inertia in D form. Uh, mass moment of inertia in dynamics. Moment of a force. They all just meet this mathematical definition of a moment. That's why they give them all um, sort of these uh, matching names. So, okay, here's the moment. And I think it's a good idea to remember that a moment is defined by the force that applies it and the point that you're taking the moment about. Um, this is also like physics, people tend to treat this as synonymous with a torque. So like in physics, you might have talked about torques. Engineering people don't tend to think of them as synonyms because a torque in engineering is usually used to mean a very specific combination of moments. Um, but like, so in physics one, when you talk about torques, this is what you're talking about. Um, and say that you have this arbitrary object so here's some body, and this can be in uh, 2D or 3D. Um, and let's say that here, this point P a force F is applied. So this is the force vector F. And then let's say that this is the point that you're calculating the moment about. So this is A. Um, then draw a vector that goes from A to P.
and we'll call that vector rho, the Greek letter rho. So let me name these things first. So A is the point the moment is calculated about Um, a lot of times I'll call that the about point. P is the point where the force is applied. This vector rho is the vector 2p from a and then the moment which is a vector uh, so the moment about a is what this means is equal to that rho vector crossed with the force vector The intuitive meaning of this so think about like uh, you have a bolt and you're trying to turn it with a wrench okay there are two things that are going to determine uh, how successful you are at using this bolt. Oh, it's green and one is the other one in the right way. That's right. But um, it's not it's not just about the force that's being applied to it. It's also about how far down the wrench you apply that force. So if you apply that same force right here, it wouldn't it wouldn't turn the furnace very much. But if you apply that same heavy duty in this case, here's what we're talking about. F. Yep, the force. So if you're trying to turn this, um, think of the bolt as the about point. Think of this as the point P. You're applying a force F at P, and the row vector is this. So what what it, what it's doing is for the class product is. Telling you, calculating or determining a, a product of two vectors. And the perpendicular distance from the axis to where the force is applied. It's not good enough to just multiply the distance, the force times the distance from the axis. You just like do it. If you're trying to turn that bolt by applying the force this way, that's never going to turn out very well. Um, that the distance that matters is the distance. Perpendicular to that point, right? So that's what the product has to be. Um, and I recommend um, uh, a table for keeping track of. Um, so to keep track
of uh, the row vector, the force vector, and the moment vector. Um, so like for example, uh, so rho, force, moment. And then you can enter in the values like, so say this is five, negative two, zero. The force is zero, 1500, zero. Uh, take the cross product and you get zero, zero, 7500. And you'll do this for, um, so once you draw a free body diagram, you'll have all these different forces acting. Well, this is row force and moment for one of the forces, then the next force, then the next force. And at the end, when you go to Newton's second law and the moment equation, you'll have this column of things that give you the entire left side of Newton's second law. And you'll have this column of things that give you the entire left side of what I'm gonna call rotational Newton's second law, the moment equation. Okay, so here's some things about the number of equations that you're gonna get out of stuff. Uh, so notice, so the first thing is, when you're using the moment equation, That's what I'm going to call rotational Newton's second law. For a single body, you have to use the same about point for every force. And when you're using Newton's laws for a rigid body, um, if you're if it's a two-dimensional problem, Newton's second law, how many equations does that give? So if it's a two-dimensional problem, you have an x and a y component on all your forces. Yep. So two equations. Yep. Um, 2D is like in the plane. So think about how many, how many directions something can rotate in the plane. Uh, you know, how many axes can something rotate around in the plane? All it can do is rotate in that plane. And so the rotational Newton second law only gives you one additional equation. So you get a total of two equations from Newton's second law one equation from rotational Newton's second law, um, and that's a total of uh, three equations. So that means with those three equations, you can solve for three variables, you know, three forces you don't know, or, you know, two forces in one position, or you can solve for three variables. If you're in 3D instead of 2D, Um, Newton's second law gives you three equations. That's uh, Newton's second law in the x, y, and z directions. And rotational Newton's second law. Um, now you can rotate in any of the three planes, not just in a single plane. And so that also gives you three equations. And so the total, if you're in 3D, is six equations. And so that means you can solve for six different variables, whether they're forces or positions or couples or whatever.
And the way you calculate a moment is, um, so the moment about some point A is the rho vector crossed with the force vector. So this is the moment produced by that force F where rho is the vector to the point P where the force is applied from the about point and F is the force vector. Um, there's one thing that I want you to um, have intuition about the direction of this of this moment. So notice that a moment is always a vector. Okay. Um, sometimes, and so a, a vector has a magnitude and a direction. Uh, and we'll sometimes use simplifications where we treat it like it's a scalar, but it's always a vector. So I want you to have in mind what the direction is. Um, so remember, I gave this example that I think is sort of a nice way to picture what a moment does, uh, where you're trying to turn this bolt by turning a wrench, by applying a force to this wrench. And if you apply a force this way, uh, it's gonna rotate it counterclockwise. Um, so this is the force, this is the point P where the force is applied, uh, not, not row P. Okay, this is the about point. The row vector goes from A to P, okay? So what's the direction of the moment? Um, the direction of the moment is determined by the right-hand rule. So have your fingers curl in the direction that the object is gonna rotate, and your thumb points in the direction of the moment. Um, so, So we're going to have in the plane to make it uh, even at that moment, the xy plane. Uh, the moments are always going to be either positive P, or if it's a moment the other way, negative P. Okay? And so a lot of times when you're doing plane problems, people treat moments like a scalar because all you really need to represent the direction is a positive or a negative. But you have to remember that it really is a vector. And that vector is always perpendicular to both the row vector and the vector. Okay. So, um, notice for two D problems. Moments um, are always, and for 2D, like when I do 2D, I'm always going to use the XY plane. Moments are always parallel to the Z axis. Okay, why is that? Um, well, if you take, um, so let's say we have a moment that we're calculating between a row vector. So let's say a row vector is row x, row y, zero. Okay. So that's a vector that's in the xy plane. And we're crossing that with a force vector that's also in the xy plane.
The answer is zero for X, zero for Y, and then rho X F Y minus rho Y F X. So if rho and f are both in the xy plane, the only non-zero component you can get for your moment is z. All right, well, let me do a two-dimensional example. Uh, let's say we have this board. And... Uh, it has a width of 0.5 meters. And a length of two meters. Um, and let's say that there is a force applied here, straight up of 20,000 Newtons. And a force applied here straight to the right of 10,000 Newtons. And let's take two different points. Uh, let's say that there is a point A here and a point B here. And we want to calculate the net moment, so that's the sum of all the moments, first about the point A, and then we'll do it about the point B. And what we're gonna see is that um, the moments depend on your about point, okay? If you choose a different about point, your, your moments are going to come out different. Yeah. Okay, so before you uh, calculate moments, you should draw a free body diagram, but this is already a free body diagram. All we have is forces. So I'm going to go straight to, remember I said that I think it's a good idea for bookkeeping to write out a table for each rigid body you do. So we'll have a column for the row vectors. This is part A. A column for the force vectors. And then a column for the moments. Um, and then we'll have two rows. One for the 20,000 Newton force and one for the 10,000. So first I'll do the 20,000. And I'm using the usual coordinate system. Okay, so if our about point is A, what's the vector from the about point to the point where the 20,000 Newton force is applied? So from A to where that 20,000 Well, you have to go, so if you start here, you get 10,000 and you get this head uh, correction, you get here. Um, start at A, go two meters in the positive x direction, and then you're there, so that's the end of it. It's two, zero, zero. Everybody with me on that? And then, uh, what's the 20,000 Newton force vector as component? That's in the positive y, so zero, positive 20,000, zero. And now take the cross product, 
you get zero for x, zero for y. This is a plane problem, so it always has to work out like that. And then uh, the z component is 40,000. Now we'll do the 10,000 Newton force. Ten thousand newton force. We're going to start at A, and we need to come up with the row vector that the front of the entire back point is applied. So it happens to go to here to the top of that direction, and half of here in the negative y direction. So it's two negative point five zero. Force vector is in the positive x direction, so it's just going to be 10,000, 0, 0. And for this one again, you get 0, 0, and then the z component is 2 times 0 minus negative 0.5 times 10,000, so that's a positive 5,000. And so the net moment, the sum of the moments, Is zero zero forty thousand plus zero zero five thousand so that's zero zero forty five thousand and if this is all in newtons and meters then the units are newton meters Um, if this wasn't, if, if these were the only rows mapping on it, then the sum of the moments would be in the positive z direction, uh, which means that this thing would have an angular acceleration. Would it be a clockwise angular acceleration or counterclockwise? Counter, yep. So a positive z component is counterclockwise. A negative z component is clockwise. It's the right hand rule. Okay. So now I'm going to do the same thing, but with a different about point. Um, so what I want you to remember about this is your about point is part of the answers that you get for this. If you choose a different about point, you get different answers. Okay. Um, we'll in this class be able to choose any about point we want, but I. I want you to remember that the about point is part of determining what the moment is generally for a force. Um, okay, so I'm going to write out the uh, table again. Row vector, force vector, moment vector. And I'll start with the 20,000 again. So 2.50. And then the force vector, that doesn't change from before. That's still 0, 20,000, 0. And so the moment, if you take that cross product, is 0, 0, positive 40,000. And now we'll do the 10,000 Newton force. And the force vector is 10,000, zero, zero. But now, before we calculate this, just look at this picture. Um, so 
the way we can all rethink approaches to um, the, the south point is like crystal action and open source action is the one you're looking at with action. With that portion of the program. The thing about the agenda, the thing about the most important thing we're trying to create a win win situation. Does that make sense? You know, and so we expect this to be more money. And the cross product does that. Um, so uh, we have zero for X, zero for Y, like we always do in the plane. But two times zero minus zero times ten thousand gives us another zero. And so for this one, the net moment about, I guess it's B this time. We're going to change these subscripts to Bs. Then it's just zero, zero, forty thousand plus zero, 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 so. Newton meters. Okay, let me do a three dimensional example. So let's say we have this plate. Um, and at the center here, I'm going to draw the coordinate system we're going to use. Um, so let's Make the x-axis go that way, the y-axis go up, and the z-axis to the side. Um, and let's say that at that origin, there's a cable connected that goes uh, directly to the wall right above um, the corner there. So this cable goes like this. And this distance is one meter. And then um, the size of this plate is two meters in both dimensions. So two meters that way, two meters that way. So now if we assume if we assume that the cable tension is 10,000 newtons, um, what's the moment produced by the cable, or what's the moment, this vector MA, applied to the plate by the cable. And we need to specify an about point, and the one I'm going to use is this right here. Okay, so um, 
what are some clients who just think they're just going to be here off of that table, away from the box, away from the box, just looking that way. And then we're going to talk to the little vendor and the porch vendor and, and then just do the side by side. So we'll set up the table the same way, but it just gets, you know, in 3D, there's more stuff to think about. Okay, so uh, first let's figure out the force vector. Um, what process are we going to follow to come up with that force vector? We know that the magnitude is 10,000 newtons. Yeah, so you could do it with cosine and sine, but uh, when I mentioned the different ways to come up with the unit vector, um, I, I said that um, you probably don't want to ever use the angle of the cosine and sine in a screen shot. It's probably only useful for screen shots. So instead, um, if we could come up with, so let's come up with a vector that goes from this point to this point, and then we'll normalize. Okay, so uh, what's the vector that, or it's not from here, sorry, it's from the above from here. Okay. This is going to go <laughs> So we want, of course, we want a new vector that goes from this point to here because that's the direction of the point. So to go from here to here, we won't worry about a unit vector yet, we just want a vector. So how do you do that? You go, you can go, yeah, one meter along the negative x-axis, <laughs> and then you can go one meter along the positive z-axis, and then one meter in the positive y, along the positive y. Okay? You with me on that? So here's the path I'm going to... I'm going to go, um, one meter that way, that's negative x, then I'm going to go one meter that way, that's positive z, and then I'm going to go one meter that way. So this vector u that's in the direction of that cable force is negative 1 for x, uh, positive 1 for z, and positive 1 for y. Now we want to make it, we want to normalize it, we want a unit vector in that direction. So we need the magnitude of this vector. And that's negative 1 squared plus 1 squared plus 1 squared square root. So that's root 3. And now the unit vector that we want is, yeah, negative 1 over root 3, positive 1 over root 3, positive 1 over root 3, which I think I remember is uh, 0.577, something like that. So we have negative 0.577, positive 0.577, positive 0.577. Okay, so that's a unit vector in the direction we want. We already knew what those, uh, well, in a way we did. So what you can think of, what we did is we thought of, so we knew the magnitude was 10,000. Uh, we thought of the unit vector in this direction, which would be 1, 0, 0, and then multiply it by 10,000. But when they're just along the x direction, it's pretty easy to do it this way. You just do it over in the positive x. But, but then you can still think of, like, this has the unit vector 1, 0, 0, this has the unit vector 0, 1, 0, and then we just multiply and add them and make the units smaller and make them smaller. Okay. 
So we're going to be doing multiple combinations. Yeah, now we are. Yep. So now we have this unit vector. Um, so the force vector is 10,000 times that. So negative 577, positive 576. Uh, does, what comes after the 7? Okay. So let's just make that 4, 774, 5774. Any questions about that? And now the next thing we need is a row vector. And the row vector goes from the about point to where the force is applied. Um, this is the about point. So we get up to the road from here to the place that that we will apply the force to the point is there. So So that row vector is negative one, zero, one. Um, the way, so a, a meter this way, and then a meter this way. And so now I'm going to set up the table, even though there's only one force and one moment here, I'm just going to set it up. So row vector, force vector, moment about A. So the row vector is negative 1, 0, 1. The force is negative 5, 7, 7, 4, positive 5, 7, 7, 4. Positive five seven seven four. And now the cross product, uh, you have negative five seven seven four. This is just plug it into your calculator to do this. Um, then this comes out to be zero, I think. Uh, so negative 5774 plus 5774. And then um, the last one is negative 5774. So that table applies a force about A of negative 5774. Negative five seven seven four, and the units are newton meters. Okay. 